Hi everybody, welcome back to the Venetian Conference Center here in Las Vegas. You're watching theCUBE's coverage of VMware Explore 2024. I'm here with Rob Strecce, my co-host. John Furrier is also in the house. This is our 11th year at either VMworld or VMware Explore. A couple of years of COVID in between. You know, AI and GPUs and high bandwidth memory and, and CXL and NAND, it's changing. AI is really changing the storage hierarchy. Particularly, not even so much we're talking about primary storage, we're talking about the, the top of the pyramid, if you will, and we're really excited to have David McIntyre here. He's the Director of Product Planning at Samsung. He's joined by Arvind Jagannath, who's the Senior Product Line Manager for Broadcom. Guys, thanks for taking some time and coming on theCUBE. Some real hot innovations going on. The whole stack is being reformatted. We, we just had an AI infrastructure leaders out of our Palo Alto office in, the, in conjunction with the New York Stock Exchange. So much is happening in semiconductors and software, so really appreciate you guys coming on. David, you were walking by, we started having a chat. Yes, we did. You were giving a presentation today. Yeah. Set it up, what were you talking about? And then we want to bring Arvin in and understand where ESX plays and vSphere and, and all the innovations that VMware is bringing. So, so please. coming from the Silicon Valley and representing Samsung Semiconductor, um, I was bringing to you the, the latest and greatest in infrastructure around the memory tiering that you just mentioned, the triangle where you've got HBM at the top, DRAM, and then storage class memory followed by NAND and even hard disk drives today. And the closer you get to the top, you get highest performance, lowest latency, and then as you drop down in that pyramid, things get a little less expensive, but you, and you get that capacity boost as well. But anyway, that comes from AI and the opportunity, the, the surge in uh, me, uh, the compute elements that are somewhat constrained by memory, and you've heard of maybe the memory wall, and so Samsung is the leader in memory and storage, has the opportunity to push down that memory wall and make GPU and uh, CPU resources and other compute resources uh, working hand in hand. In fact, I put together a nice slide that shows the balance of compute memory and storage together working harmon harmoniously to get the best performance and uh, drive the application requirements using that technology. So it used to be pretty simple. You'd have, um, you'd have main memory, and then you'd have a, a you know, spinning dish, disk which had a cache in it, yeah. and, and, and then you had maybe tape in the back end. And the bottleneck then was always, you had to destage the, the, the cache to the spinning disk. And so years ago, yeah. when, when EMC came out with Symmetrics, it was like as many disk drives as you could right. get. Remember, they, they didn't use RAID 5 because it was too much overhead, so they did mirroring. And that was like state of the art. That is, that is now you know, ancient history. Mm -hmm. AI yes. is changing everything. It, what you described is a much more granular hierarchy. Yes. Um, and, and, and one that is like highly persistent. So you've still got the destaging bottlenecks, but it's happening at much, much higher speeds. And you've injected persistence into the system through both NAND, I guess also CXL, and also the ability if you pull the plug. So explain, yeah. explain that sort of where we are today in that hierarchy. So, it, right, you emphasize persistence, which is very, very important, and solutions have been out. NV dims, the power goes out, you have electrolytic caps that can preserve the state of that DRAM. Uh, and then another complement to that is the memory tiering, you also mentioned it. How about if you put both main functions in one common platform? So you're addressing the, the triangle that, that we just walked through, but you're also providing persistence where persistence is needed. So for these, the, the lights go out and you need to preserve your data, that is certainly one clear requirement for persistence. But also, especially across enterprise, persistent rights that have to support service level agreements, SLAs, that, that's, a, that's a policy requirement. And sometimes that gets overlooked. So by, by providing a new technology in a platform that provides persistence, as well as contributing to that, that tiered memory triangle that we were talking about, is pretty exciting stuff. And, and that's a compliance thing in certain industries, like financial services perhaps? It, it absolutely is. And is that, a, is that an asynchronous right? I mean, is it, or, 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 or is it? Syn synchronous. It's a synchronous right, so there's a, there's, yep. there's a little bit of latency involved, but they, ha they by, by, by law, I guess, or by, by policy, they have to, they have to uh, endure that latency 
because, because that persistence is more important. As long as you're deterministic as well, yeah. that's right. Yeah. And there's things that have to happen in the platform, like CXL has been around for like about five right. years now, I think 2019 is when yeah. it kind of formed up as, a, as an offering. So what, what is happening yeah. in the platform? So, so what VMware is doing is we, we realized the potential of CXL very early. I mean, we, have, we had been playing with PCI for a long time now. And um, we also have a lot of expertise with memory in general because uh, we were one of the leaders in VM migration, tracking pages and memory, et cetera, right? So now we are at a stage where CXL came to us at exactly the right moment. Optane went away, but uh, there was CXL, and then we have the great collaboration with uh, Samsung now, bringing their device. Now what CXL does is, um, it has a lot of interesting features such as uh, having the CPU, the, giving the CPU the ability to uh, run instructions on the device directly, memory instructions on the device, and for the device to be able to access uh, the host memory in a coherent manner. So what that gives us is, an, is a really fast you know, memory tiering, um, which goes beyond software schemes. And I think uh, we have all the you know, expertise and know-how about how to make this um, fast and uh, jitter-free for our customers. And our goal is to reduce performance requirements for our customers. In terms of applications, we don't want them seeing any performance loss. So CXL definitely achieves that for us. Is this current hierarchy that you're describing, I mean, high bandwidth memories and short supply, it's also super fast. Uh, is this, do you is this a bridge architecture, or do you see this as um, a, a more of a long term? Uh, and, and, and even when high bandwidth memory becomes more available, which I don't know how long that's going to take, but do you see this surviving that, or is this kind of a a, a, a bridge or a hybrid? Can you I, I can help us understand on that? that? Yeah. Sure. Uh, so CXL itself really uh, solves a problem on cons server constraints, where you only have so many DIMMs that you can put in an individual server. Some servers can hand, handle up to maybe five terabytes of DRAM, which is a huge amount of memory, but then it stops there. CXL provides, as Arvin is articulating, memory expansion, eventually memory pooling. It basically frees up these constraints so that now you can expand out with additional devices uh, and, or even systems that are CXL enabled across fabric through orchestration layers. Uh, and the devices is itself that you can expand beyond just the physical constraints of the server. So CXL, in fact, Samsung's on the, the board of directors of the CXL consortium, and CXL has absorbed many other uh, standards and consortiums as well. So it's, it's living and thriving, and it's starting to find its way into actual production deployments. Yeah. And in fact, Samsung has now built a full portfolio of CXL enabled uh, platforms, and one is called CMMH. So CMMH stands for CXL Memory Module, and the H stands for hybrid. And Arvin knows this very well. The hybrid part includes DRAM as well as NAND flash, all in one E3 device. We also have a variant of that in a AIC form factor, type two, called the CMMH VSA. And Arvin can tell us more about that because Samsung and VMware are partnered on that particular device. So just to follow up, when I'm, when I'm constrained in the physical server, I can scale out, is that right? Yes, with CXL you with, can. With, with CXL capable Correct. systems. Yeah. And, and to me, and we'll get to the VSA part of it because that it's very interesting to me as well is that I would see this as a, a huge thing, especially as we go towards pooling, because when you start to look at pools of memory being utilized, AI and checkpointing and being able to complete things, a lot yeah. of times it's, not, it's how fast you can feed the GPUs. And a big constraint of that is how fast it can get from memory or from disk or what have you into that. I, this would seem like this is one of those, hey, it's the right time, to have this solution come out. Is that, we kind of reading the tea leaves uh, that way? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. the other thing, um, you know, I would say, um, a sort of which uh, this solves is, what we have seen across our customer base is um, memory tends to be utilized and consumed 
um, but you know a lot of the customers report that they only use 10 20 percent of their CPU capacity how can we make uh, the infrastructure efficiencies better I mean how can we reduce this imbalance that occurs between CPU GPU memory and uh, a CXL based approach definitely helps us and like you mentioned uh, with infinite pooling like uh, ability now you get you know infinite supply of memory to make sure that these resources are well better utilized. And how, well, how does the VSA play into that? So the VSA actually provides um, uh, a large capacity and uh, it also has uh, extendability, meaning you can actually plug a VSI into multiple hosts and um, I mean we can we are architecting it to be extendable um, so that you know, in the future, CXL also has the ability to hide the underlying infrastructure complexities, but still provide the ability to give more memory on demand even, right? Where are we in the cost per bit equation? I mean, NAND obliterated so-called high spin speed disk. It was kind of an oxymoron, but disk's still around. I mean, uh, hyperscalers use disk, you know, customers use it for, for, for cheap and deep. What's that hierarchy look like? So DRAM, HBM most expensive, and then CXL, and then NAND, and then spinning disk, right? And then I guess tape, orders of magnitude lower. Is that right? But, but where are we in the, say, the NAND to spinning disk equation? That's been bouncing around for a long time. Yeah, NVMe and uh, NAND is still uh, considered pretty fast. I think um, uh, yeah. in the industry it's uh, really used for a variety of different applications, high speed applications. Um, CXL actually sort of um, brings the bridge between the DRAM and NAND a little closer. If you architect it well enough, then you can bring you know, elements of CXL to speed up you know, some of the NAND uh, that, that, uh, that's being used for CXL. So it, it definitely speeds up the application and brings a better value. And, and to that point, and to Dave's question around the whole cost aspect of it, it would seem like this can also help expand the life cycle and you know, duty time of a server as well, because you, yes. you can go and bring pieces to that server. So you can add additional servers to the problem because you have this memory constraint, and talking with the financial services people here at VMware, uh, you know, that, that's an, an issue as you talked about utilization. Um, if we could improve that utilization ratio drastically by balancing the compute memory and storage resources, you're getting a CapEx and OpEx boost. <coughs> Excuse me, well also the income statement, so all the hyperscalers have now, you know, depreciating over six years, right? And so that yes. makes the income statement look a little better. You got to read the fine print in the, uh, in the financial statements. But, but this is an exciting time. Uh, uh, HBM's still very much constrained. Uh, so I come back to the earlier question I asked is, is, is do you guys see this architecture as um, evolving over time? Because um, balance is the key. I mean, you, mm -hmm. you mentioned that. CXL is like the, the load balancer, if you will, the, 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 the balancing element of the, of the stack. So, you know, the, the hierarchy has, is elongated and compressed over time, and it seems to be getting more granular now. Yes. Do you see that continuing, I guess is the question. Yes, so in fact, you could argue that, if, especially for AI applications, yeah. storage was kind of the, the second tier cousin to DRAM, HBM was the, the favorite child, and now we are, that's a great way to look at it, we're seeing that triangle compressing together. So HBM has the, the highest bandwidth, the, the best near CPU or GPU performance. And with DRAM, and, and if working closely with, with NAND memory, uh, in fact with the CMMH Samsung platform that I referred to, by putting both of those media types in one common platform, you're actually showing the host the, the cumulative capacity between the DRAM in that same platform as the NAND. So if I had 16 gigabyte of DRAM cache, plus maybe four terabytes of NAND, altogether it looks like a four terabyte plus capacity point that's now available to the host. Oh, interesting, okay, so that's just a virtual pool that they see. Um, now when we talk about AI, you know, we sort of talk, we throw AI into this big bucket, 
Um, with private AI and the, we the power law of Gen AI we, that the Cube Research put out early last year, we see customers wanting to do uh, things on-prem um, to the extent that they can get GPUs. There's also the inference piece of it. So how are you seeing the memory uh, hierarchy and trends supporting the different AI workloads? Can you guys speak to that? Um, so we are looking into um, HBM as a potential um, you know, uh, tiering uh, candidate. So um, because we, we have the expertise in tiering between different types of devices, HPM could potentially become a candidate between, you know, for example, DRAM and HPM. So that way we can uh, make sure that GPU gets additional memory because it's tiering between HPM and DRAM. Um, and at the same time, we are trying to get uh, give more value to Gen AI type of applications by, um, you know, re reducing the CPU utilization issue. Right now, we we improve C CPU utilization, give more uh, CPU to to the AI applications. Uh, so overall, it is definitely more value th that we bring. Right. So, let's see. What else should we be thinking about roadmap wise? What can you share? You know, a little sort of vision as to where you see this whole thing going without obviously divulging anything confidential? Yeah, with CXL, um, uh, I think we are one of the industry firsts which is um, looking into a type two that they call, which is, you know, really custom. Um, and, you know, a lot of the, uh, and we are thankful to the collaboration with Samsung that, you know, we are working together on, on this new architecture. Uh, so that gives us an ability to not only extend um, within the memory realm, but also go beyond, uh, for example, we can do V-motion improvements potentially. We could also do AI inferencing because uh, the accelerator has the ability to accelerate a lot of different use cases, mm -hmm. right? So that's that's sort of the vision we are doing. Uh, the other question is, is you see you know, obviously Blackwell, we need bigger GPUs. You hear Jensen right. talk about that. Blackwell maybe looks like, not maybe, but it looks like it's delayed a bit. Um, but it's coming. Uh, and then also, at the other end of the spectrum, you have folks working on, you know, non-monolithic designs, chiplets and things like that. H how do you see the memory hier hierarchy? Is it sort of irrelevant um, what approach takes? I mean whether it's a huge monolithic GPU versus you know, some kind of um, alternative architecture, uh, you're seeing a, a number of new uh, startups come out. How does that play into the way you guys think about supporting all these new workloads? That is definitely the latest dynamic that large language models are very, very important to our industry, but now we're seeing more tuned language models to the size of the application, to the specific requirements. So you don't necessarily have to have a trillion parameter model to do the job. Uh, so we see aligning our memory compute or GPU resources to best support uh, those more custom cloud to edge applications is certainly one. And edge doesn't need to run a, an LLM necessarily. It can have a more custom sized model to do so. From Samsung's perspective, We've developed, as I mentioned earlier, a full portfolio of technology platforms. I, I emphasize the CMMH, which as you pointed out, Dave, features persistence and also tier memory. We have a CMMD product, which is focused just on memory expansion alone, and we talked about that's a, a way to alleviate the server constraints. We also have, and this is the roadmap part that you asked about, the CMMB, which is the CXL memory module box. And so this is putting all the, a mix or the same types of devices all in one box that can be managed with, we call it Cognos, it's our orchestration layer. So now Samsung is not just providing a device, but a complete system that's, that's available. Uh, and then for the, the overall uh, advantage on TCO, you know, we're experiencing at the show that customers are really focused on the TCO, CapEx, OpEx benefit is these types of solutions offer. Plus that systems expertise you can bring to your customers, help them sort of fine tune things and, right. and, and understand how, to, how that whole system works. So you got large language models, you got small language models, 
Um, and, and we've put forth this idea that you've got LLMs going to LAM, large action models. So you can imagine, uh -huh. everybody's talking about agents and co-pilots, but not a lot of people are talking about swarms of agents. You know, agentic AI is something we've, we've researched a little bit, started to write about. It's, we haven't done the research on what that means for the infrastructure, but that could bring new capabilities. And I'm sure you guys are thinking about you know, the possible and, uh, and supporting the future. This, this isn't something that you develop to, to retire a year from now. You I mean, you're thinking in presumably 10 year cycles you know, yeah. or longer, so. And even far shorter than that is the ability for Samsung to continue our partnership with VMware, where we can uh, better improve the utilization of uh, virtual machines that may not be deployed because they're constrained on memory resources. So this, this uh, platform variant, it's a use, special use case for VMware, where the CMMH with a VSA at the end for the VMware project, that allows us to best support virtual machines, which helps all the, of the great products that VMware deploys be better utilized. Now, what was the reaction to your presentation today? What kind of questions were you getting? Um, was this novel to the customers, or were they sort of saying, wow, this solves my problem? What, what kind of feedback were you getting? Um, pretty much appreciative that a lot of end users in the audience and the financial services lead for VMware, uh, Steve Fusco, he was uh, basically presenting the voice of the end customer, and I'm coming in, in it as a Silicon Valley technology lead saying, okay, here's what we have, here's in our in our toolkit that we can have to solve these problems. But having that, that voice of the end customer there uh, really enables, okay, well this customer, tier one customer has, these, that has this specific criteria, these channel customers may have different required uh, elements. And so being able to support and match up our technology with the end user experience in financial services was a great opportunity. And that was the sort of Q&A that we were getting from, from the audience. And Arvind, we'll give you the last word. Any, any you know, hallway conversation, hallway track, or if you're presenting, you know, what, are you, what, are you, what are you hearing from folks? Yeah, so we, we are, I, I think, um, like I mentioned, uh, memory tiering is one of our uh, key uh, pillars this year uh, in terms of infrastructure enablement. Uh, I focus mostly on the infrastructure from a product management point and uh, vSphere, again, is ESX's foundation to everything that we do, and um, I think we, we are definitely providing more value to VCF because we are improving our foundation, right? So um, we, we think that uh, customers are getting more from VCF because we are improving the efficiencies, and thus we are helping them reduce their costs. Guys, love this conversation, love to geek out with the Silicon Valley experts. Uh, thanks so much for coming to theCUBE and uh, helping us wrap up day one, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, this is it for, for theCUBE coverage of VMware Explorer 2024. This is, this is Monday, sort of day zero, if you will. We'll be back tomorrow, uh, here through Wednesday. Uh, I'm Dave Vellante, he's Rob Stretchy. John Furrier is also in the house. Go to siliconangle.com, theCUBEresearch.com, and theCUBE.net for all the coverage. Thanks for watching, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>